Hello, Lisa? Yes, I said, how you doing? Uh, we had a bad connection. Lisa? Yes? Oh, yeah, we're good now. We're good now. How are you? Great, great. Thank you. How you doing? I'm doing good. Thanks for being on the podcast today. Of course. Lisa, I got to say, I'm a big fan, and I want to be the first to welcome you back to Detroit this time. Actually, you've been coming here a lot lately. You loving the D? Well, the thing, no, not in the least. I have, I am uh, virtually off because I said to myself, after two divorces and 73 lousy boyfriends, the hell with it. I'm going to stick to just myself. And I'm going through menopause, so I don't even have to do myself. I pretty much go to sleep and wake up and do the show, and that's it. Okay, well, all right, we love you right back, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, okay, okay. But hey, I've been listening. We was getting ready for this um, po- podcast, the interview, and um, it shows you came out of retirement. Well, I want to say roast retirement on Stern. You had a few jokes about um, our new president, Donald Trump. Oh my God! Well, you know Donald Trump. I've got, I know him from the Celebrity Apprentice, of course, and from the Comedy Central roast. And I will tell you, there's so much material to make fun of this guy. Whether you like him or hate him, you're going to laugh at it. Like, I mean, if you agree with his, I mean, let's be honest, his foreign policy is shakier than Michael J. Fox. You cannot win with this guy. So the fact is, even if supporters come out to see my show, they'll love the jokes at least about his hair and his horrible orangutan colored skin. And we'll just laugh and have a good time at his expense. Okay, okay. I mean, are you a little worried he may, you know, shoot a couple of tweaks your way? That's what's weird, dude. That's, I'm so glad you brought that up because I seem to be the one comedian or one person he lets get away with a lot of the trash talking. Cause I think he thinks I'm kidding. I think I've deluded him into thinking that I'm uh, on his side. So I don't. I stay out of all the battles. I've, I've been very lucky. I haven't gone through that Rosie O'Donnell treatment that he's given to her and many other people. So I think because we're friendly from the apprentice, he's like, oh, he's just kidding when in fact, am I? Who knows? But that's the thing. I mean, like, a lot of the stuff that you are for, you're doing a lot of stuff with LGBT, you're doing a lot of stuff, you're very pretty clear on your point. I, I, the littlest investigation on his side, he, he could pretty much figure that out. Well, you know what's funny when you get a little bit of investigation? I've only seen that he doesn't really do any homework. <laughs> <laughs> uh, it's like, okay, he just goes, please, uh, He's a good one, ha uh, ha. And that's it. Hey, if it ever does catch up to haunt me, what's the worst that can happen? I get more famous. Hey, you know what? You got a point. You got a point. I mean, like, yes. you said it best. This guy is giving you a lot of material. But, like, right now in these times, do you think it's, like, very important to be a comedian? Because we need some type of levity. Every time I look at my phone and CNN, I get the little news alert. It's always some type of horrific event. So what do you think about, like... Yeah, I mean, if we didn't make fun of all the things that we feared and hated, we really would all just kill ourselves. I mean, life can't be one long episode of Law & Order Special Victims Unit, although that is my favorite show. But if all we did was, you know, think about uh, all the horrible things going on in the world, the politics of the world, we'd really want to off ourselves. I think comedy, stand-up, music, movies, any kind of art or any kind of performance just brings us out of it a little bit. And, hey, to come to my show and for two and a half hours laugh it up and forget your troubles, that's what my whole goal is. It's not to be political. It's not to be politically correct, as you already know. Um, And you just say, well, let's see what happens, you know? Let people just have fun for a night and be happy. And then the next day they can go back to their crappy lives where they worked for a car manufacturer that isn't in business anymore. That's, yeah, that's pretty much all of them. But, um, yeah, let, like, you're going to be here Friday night, um, the 17th at the soundboard. Now, the last time I saw you, you were, if memory serves me right, in Warren at Andy Amos, um, I want to say late 2015, early 16, and, like, yeah. it was cool, and you had a Q&A with the audience. Do you still do those? Oh, my God, dude, can I tell you something wild about that? That's yeah. what was the first Q&A I ever did and you saw it. Uh, it has gotten where people have so many questions about my divorce, my weight loss surgery, you know, Trump, the roast, that we've done, the Q&A has become a 
a massive part of the show, and questions have gotten way more personal and serious and funny, and people just, me, me and people go at it. Dude, and you, you witnessed the start of something that I love doing the most during my show, so yeah, we're totally doing that again. Okay, okay, and I'm glad you brought that up because lately you've been bringing a lot of your personal life into your work. You know, your weight loss, the divorce. Do you find that hard or is it kind of like cathartic just to get that off your chest? No pun intended. Uh, yeah. Uh, yeah, I think the more stressful thing is to hold anything in. You know, it's like holding in a fart. It's horrifyingly bad. It'll ruin a massage. Well, if I tried to hold in anything that was bugging me, like, you know, uh, you know, relationships with men or, uh, you know, trying to keep my weight off and all that stuff, I would be sort of holding stuff back and people would see it. So I'm very grateful that they can see it and get a kick out of it and I can kind of get it off my chest. So at the end of the show, we all feel 100 pounds lighter. Okay. Um, I mean, like, along with that, I mean, like, a lot of that, that was pretty hard. I mean, I've seen some interviews you've been on, and you um, find a levity in that because, you know, it sucks. Yes, we can't cry about it. Let's just laugh about it. Look, the fact is, I dropped 107 pounds. Big deal. Five years is I kept it off, and it's been a pain in my ass ever since. And the fact is, everybody's like, who are you dating now? Nobody. Who's hitting on a 55-year-old menopausal bitch with a buzz cut? It ain't happening to me. So if I didn't laugh about it, I'd cry about it. So I just get personal. And then I find that the audience tells me their stories, which are way creepier than mine. So I'm like, well, I'm still doing pretty good compared to most people. So yeah, it's just so much fun to do. I got to say, doing comedy, stand-up comedy is the last bastion of free speech. I'm just fortunate I get to do it for a living. Yeah, you may want to hurry up on that free speech. I'm pretty sure you got a few more executive orders. <laughs> You're probably right. You're probably right. Okay. Um, also, you haven't just been sitting down uh, with your stuff. You had the off-Broadway show stuff. Any plans of bringing that back, maybe even touring? Yes, absolutely both. Um, we're in talks now with theaters to possibly bring it back in the fall because it got really great reception. And I also found that it appealed to not just women because it's about weight and food and body image. A lot of men liked it too because it helped them understand us bitches a little bit better because we're a pain in the ass. So, and also a lot of men, you know, struggle with these things. But since I do it in a funny way, they actually got a kick out of it. So yeah, the plan is to hopefully bring it back to New York, then to tour it. And you know I'm coming to Detroit. I mean, come on, it's one of my top three markets in the world. I'm, I'm coming there with everything. Oh, that's pretty cool. I couldn't wait to see it. But, I mean, like like you just said, I'm a guy, and I'm like, yeah, I want to see that. Is it, like, more guys than girls seeing it? I was actually in shock. First of all, I've seen shows like The Vagina Monologues, etc., when it's four women talking on stage, and the audience was all women except three gay guys. Well, my show, when I saw it, the audience, I'm like, oh, my God, it's half men, half women. What's going on? And I think they know if it's Lisa Lampanelli... It's going to be funny enough to get us through the emotional part. So men were really into it. So it was kind of half and half. And one night it was 90% male. And I'm talking about straight guys. So I think they felt like, wow, she's going to make us laugh no matter what. So even if we don't, like, get all emotional and teary about it because it's a play, we'll still get the laugh. So I feel very, um, I hate to sound like uh, Chance the Rapper, but I feel blessed in order to be able to do both. Man, why you gotta bring Chance in this? I love Chance. I love Chance too, but could he thank God enough? Jesus Christ! His name is Chance! Of course he had to thank God! Ah, oh, that's so true. He is adorable. Well, by the way, since it's right after the Grammys, what did you think about the whole situation? Uh, did you watch the Grammys? Were you into it? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. We watched it. Um, and quite honestly, it was good. It was just like, you guys, the technical department needs to be, like, school. <laughs> Thank you. I was like, okay, it's the biggest stage for music each year. And every year there's technical difficulties. I don't get it. I did a show in a small off Broadway theater and our mics always work. If James Hetfield, dumb Metallica, was doing my show as a guest star, I'd pretty much make sure his, his microphone was on. Are you kidding me? Yeah. No way. That Metallica show was gangster. I love watching that. The Lady Gaga. I'm it all over that drummer. I said he did not ask for a tuna melt on his neck. What are you doing? <laughs> But that's 
what are the well I didn't think she was gonna do that but that performance out of all of them was so weird that's the one that drew my attention the most because those two don't don't their crowds their styles none of that stuff goes together Right, right, but what was great about it, it wasn't like the old Reese's Peanut Butter Kit costume. It was really chocolate and peanut butter, and it worked. It went together. Um, I think also, I, I wish James Hetfield had done this thing where he's at, been like a girl and asked for a do-over. That would have been the coolest thing ever if a metal guy like that said, shut off, I'm going to start over because I love George Michael. But no, he didn't do that. I think next time, metal needs to have a bigger voice. And I know you're black. But you still must agree with me about that. Well, yeah. I mean, like, don't get me wrong. I've been a black guy for a while. All my life, really. <laughs> and, um, yeah, it's just like the, the Dale do-over. That was cool, I guess. But it was just like, that. that's not your fault. But you know the rules. You've dated a lot of black guys. One thing we can't be critical about in this day and age is Jesus, Obama, and Beyonce. All of those get a free pass. That's right, I ain't mad at none of them. And I'll tell you what, this, uh, I don't remember, I don't know all their names because I'm old, but remember at the end it was a rap performance of a bunch of guys and like they were all real angry. Who was that? Oh, that was Tribe Called Quest. Okay, that was amazing. Like, even though I'm no longer into the chocolate love, I'm willing to break that rule for every one of those guys on stage. If anyone wants a 55-year-old menopausal bitch with a bug cut, I'm going for it. They were so gangster. I was like, and they had something to say. I love people with something to say. So that was cool as hell. Yeah, I mean, like, even with that, I mean, like, even though they lost Fife, you know, Fife passed away this year, but Buster Rhymes yeah. stepping in, I, I'm pretty sure um, you could make a run to Q-Tip. I don't think he's married. I watched the documentary. Huh? So I, think I, I, might have to, I might have to go for it. He, he might like a rich white bitch with street cred. You never know. Worst case scenario, you'll boost his credit. There you go. It always does, man. And mine goes down as theirs goes up. Ain't that the way it is? Okay, but Lisa, thank you for just giving us a few minutes of your time. It was it was the damnest thing. You brought up the Grammys. We were talking about the Grammys before you even called. So, yeah. Oh, you know, because last, I had it on my mind because I was nominated for a Grammy again last year, and I lost to Louis C.K., and uh, I always watch now to see who wins the comedy one, and this year Patton Oswalt won, who I really like a lot. But I feel Amy Schumer got robbed. Do you like Schumer? Do you an Amy Schumer fan? Well, that's the thing. I like Schumer. I like Patton. So I was cool with either one. But one thing that kind of threw me a little bit, show lost too. And I and I saw that. It, it's Patton. Patton's the man. I saw that yeah. special. It was his time. So uh, he is really good, and I think he's long been very good for people. You're right, it was his time. And uh, Amy will win probably the next five years, which is fine. But boy, I'll tell you what, at those Grammys, I was so happy to not be there this year because, man, everybody's looking smoking hot. I would have had to try too hard. Uh, you, man, I'm pretty sure you get in there, you rock the dress, you show up with your blue hair. You could have worked it. <laughs> I look like Marge Simpson bang does Justin Bieber. Are you kidding me? Look, you'd have looked better than CeeLo. I don't know what the fuck he was thinking. <laughs> well, that's going to be on my, my resume. Looks better than CeeLo. Everybody wants that. Oh, yeah. <laughs> there you go. See, there you go. See, that's the thing. At least you can point to one person like, uh, at least I wasn't that guy. Yes, there you go. See, I knew I'd leave this ball with good self-esteem. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much. And once again, thanks for calling. I want everyone who can hear our voice go to your show this Friday, the 17th, at the Soundboard at Motor City Casino. Thanks so much for calling yeah. in, Lisa. Yeah, I heard that place is great. And thank you so much for being a gentleman. God bless, man. All right. You have a great show, and you have a great day. Okay, bye-bye. Bye. -bye. bye.